Hey folks, Matt from writeoftheimage.com. We've got a viewer writing in. Heading on this email is camera and lens purchase. This is Scott. Uh, Matt, I've watched dozens of your YouTube videos and find them very useful and informative. I'm a subscriber to your channel as well. You have a great wealth of knowledge in the photo camera world and present yourself very well. Well, just let me pause and say thank you very much. Always appreciate the compliment. Uh, my situation is this. I'd love to get back into photography as an avid hobby and also strongly consider it as a source of supplemental income after retirement. I'm 58 years old, grew up in the film world, and with a renewed interest, I'm now learning as much as I can about the digital world. I have over 20 grandkids, so that also means many weddings to come. I live in northern Utah and take a great uh, travel a great deal in the western U.S. with my work, which affords me many opportunities to take scenery pictures. I would imagine just living in northern Utah uh, affords you many opportunities, never mind that you have this other amazing opportunity. Uh, I love to take pictures of wildlife, scenery, and people. My first SLR camera was a Fujika AZ-1, 1978. It went to Australia with me to, for two years while I served there. I took hundreds of 35mm slides while in Sydney, on the coast, and in the outback. While there, I purchased a 500mm Tamron lens for about 100 bucks. It was great for taking pics of birds, sulfur-crested cockatoos, galas, rosellas, and kookaburras. Sydney Harbour and the Opera House also seem to have endless photo opportunities as well as never-ending sunsets. There is a plethora of opportunities for photography in Australia. I imagine there is, and I would love to go there. I still have all those slides. I need to get them digitized one day. The last camera I owned and loved was a Nikon N80. It has long since slept. It was my film best friend. I loved shooting with it. It fit my hands well. It seemed to perform like an extension of my body. Since I was a child, I seem to have been blessed with a natural gift for scenery and image composition. I have a basic understanding of natural lighting. Don't know a thing about studio lighting. I've done one outdoor wedding, and it turned out very good. Because you're an expert, and now that you have an idea of my photo history... Can you recommend a good DSLR camera and lens, uh, lenses to get back into the photo world? After watching many of your informative YouTube videos and reading uh, much, I've narrowed it down to two choices, either an Icon D610 or a D7200. Which would you recommend? And I'm certainly open to uh, other choices also if you think there's a better option than either of these two units. I look forward to your response and also to many helpful videos on your YouTube channel. Sincerely, Scott. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Um, Great. Uh, I loved reading and getting the, the background to uh, what you used to shoot and what your history is there. That's, that's, very, that's very interesting. Coming from your background, and mostly with film cameras, now getting in the digital world, my immediate thought is the D610 because you're going to stay full frame. And if you don't have much experience or any experience with digital yet, you may find coming from full frame to crop sensor a bit of an adjustment. A lot of people did originally, um, not to knock those cameras, the D7200, which is a DX crop sensor camera, 1.5 crop on a 35 mil frame, um, is a great unit. Very good autofocus system. In fact, the autofocus system in the 7200 is a little better than the one in the 610. Now that said, if you shoot like I do, and I'm typically a center focus point recomposed shooter, which a lot of people are, you'll never notice a problem with the 610. If you're into, if you, if you want to make use of a camera that has that more sophisticated tracking in the autofocus, then the 7200 is going to excel over the 610s. Uh, if you don't use that, then the 610 definitely the way to go. Um, I, I just, I love the 610. I think it's a great value proposition. It's probably the best value in full frame cameras out there right now. Um, still punching way above its price point as far as performance on the sensor. The only other unit I would consider is, uh, instead of the 610, would be possibly an 800E or a D810, the D800E or the D810. Uh, still amazing performing cameras, replaced by successively 800E, then we had the 810, and now we have the 850. But now the 800E especially is an incredible price point. You can get them usually for under $1,000, whether refurbed or used. Um, and the 36 megapixel image files out of there are just beautiful, rich, detailed files in comparison to the 610s, which is very, very good. But wow, that extra 12 megapixels just packs a punch. The 800 is also a little better autofocus system than the 610s. So um, if you can get it for you know roughly the price of a 610, which is very close nowadays, um, that's the way I would go. For me personally, it would be an 800E or a, uh, an 810 if you can get it in the right price range for you. 610, great camera. I would still, you know, if that's what you want, fine. I, I have no problems with you getting it. And just personally, I think you get a lot more value of an 800E or an 810. And now the price point is so close. That's what I would buy. 7200, great camera too. If you don't mind the crop and you want that little bit more enhanced autofocus system, not a problem either. But it is a DX camera. The advantage of the, of the FX, the full frame, is that you're going to be, it's going to be very uh, natural to you coming from film because it's the same format. 
You know, the lenses are what they say they are. A 70 to 200 is a 70 to 200. There's no crop factor. There's no effective field of view to apply. So that's what I would do. Let me throw it back to our viewers. What would you guys do in Scott's situation? Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. You wanted to know about lenses. I will get the 24 to 120 f4 VR from Nikon. I love that lens. It's a beautiful lens. If you wanted more of a walk around lens, a lot of people really like the 28 to 300. I think Scott Kelby uses the 28 to 300 a lot on his Nikons. Um, and I think Terry White does too. Uh, anyways, that's a great, more of a general all rounder, expanded range. 24 to 120 f4 VR is a higher quality optical lens as far as you're always going to lose a little with that added range and the 24 to 120 is a beautiful performing lens it's an f4 lens with the really good high iso abilities of these full frame cameras it's it's a beauty beauty lens i would add a nikon 85 millimeter f18 g beautiful portrait lens fast lens for the same reason i love a 50 on dx as many of you know the 85 is, is my favorite and that one is my favorite for value proposition very sharp beautiful bouquet great performer at a really reasonable price I would also probably add, uh, you know, some people might add a 70 to 200. Me, I'd probably add an 80 to 400, or I really like the Nikon 200 to 500 if you want something for really long range. And that's that's what I would do in that situation. So uh, that's what I would do. What do you guys think? Which camera would you go with? 610, 7200? Would you go with the 800E or the 810 like I suggested? Uh, or another camera altogether? Um, and what lenses? Do you like my choice of lenses? Is there something else you'd alternate or switch in there? Let us know in the comments below. Always great to hear back from you guys. Get your feedback as well when our viewers like Scott here are trying to make a decision. Um, and you know what, Scott? We'd love to see some of your photos. If you get them digitized and get them online, send me a link. I'd love to look at this. Some of this stuff sounds fascinating. Uh, it sounds like you've had a very um, great uh, life and especially photography life opportunity to take photos up to this point. So um, thanks again. Stay tuned. We'll stay, and uh, we'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.